Hi guys and welcome back to the Ultimate Decades Challenge. We are currently in the year 1320 so we are two decades into this challenge and she cannot reach this baby. This is okay. So at the end of last episode Clementine had not one, not two, but three babies and somehow they miraculously all survived. I honestly don't know how that happened. So now she's got four babies to look after and we do have Tristan aging up in a few days. Little Tristan is over here, the oldest baby, the first baby, and the triplets still got a couple years. So Clementine's gonna have her hands full for a little while. So last episode, Sybil actually aged up to a teenager and she's having a really hard time at the moment. Alaric really wants her to get married to like a wealthier class of people. He wants her to get married into like the middle class because she is his sister and he wants the best for her. So they're trying to make enough money at the moment for her to be able to get married. Um, they need to make 5,000 small ends and I've been saying forever that I want this farm to be renovated but it's just not happening at the moment. So we are just gonna take what we can and just try and make them some money so that so we can get married <laughs> and then we'll deal with like renovating the farm so i did get them this like selling table and i might give them the lot trait of like an at-home business i think i have the a living a living store here we go so i'm just gonna put some goods in the table i think i've already put some things in there so that they can actually sell some, some things to help so we'll get married we're gonna do a 50 percent markup we're not gonna go too crazy so Sybil can um, tend to the table and help sell some things um, to help fund her own marriage because she's the one that needs to marry middle class so she's the one that can do that work and meanwhile I'm gonna get Alaric to go fishing because that is honestly our best bet for making a lot of money really quickly. Hopefully he'll capture some DJ booths or something. Okay so I'm sending Alaric fishing, Sybil is running the store, okay come over here this is your job. Oh my god you're uncomfortable. Okay, well Clementine can do it then. Sybil is having a hard time. She's having some nausea. Do not know why. <laughs> okay, Sybil, that means that you get to look after the babies. So I actually haven't used this mod before, but hopefully we can actually sell some things because we ha do have quite a few things like in the... Wait, what happened to everything that was like in the table? I swear I put stuff in there the other day. I swear I stocked this the other day and now I feel like everything's disappeared. Okay, well I guess that's all we have. I swear that Ulysses made like a bunch of things the other day to sell at the table. Oh my god, the babies. Okay, Sybil is looking after the babies. Where are you? Bring you back here. Okay, don't know where Geraldine was. And oh my god, she's got a severe viral disease. Are you kidding me? Okay, well if you're sick with a virus, I don't know if you're like allowed to be around people. I don't know if we can let you around the babies. Oh, what do we do with Geraldine? I can't have everyone else getting sick as well. And we don't have enough money to... <laughs> oh god, okay, I'm gonna have to sell some things. I think we have some stuff in the inventory that I am going to sell because we really need the money at the moment. Okay, well I have made Geraldine a little hut over here that she can go live in and I'm literally locking her in there because I'm not having everyone else get sick with this viral disease. Are you kidding me? You are going in the hut and you're gonna think about, you're gonna think about things. Look for everyone. And Geraldine can just live in the hut. That's a good safe place for her. I really did want her to help out with the babies a bit, but if she's sick, she obviously can't do that. And Sybil, I need you to look after the babies as well. Someone is crying. Someone is upset. Caspian, this year may be a little bit chaotic between all the babies and just desperately trying to make money. Okay, you need to fish a bit faster, Alaric. And Clementine's like, hey, hey guys, come and buy our carpet. Come and buy our statue. She's very quiet. He wants to meet a cat. Boy, you have a cat. What is Bluebell doing? Oh, that's right. Wait, wait, wait. Let me look at the let me look at the sheet. I almost forgot about this. Today is Bluebell's birthday. Because Bluebell is one year old now, so she gets to stop being a kitten. And I'm gonna sell all these parts, obviously. 
And now for Bluebell, we are not doing any kind of death rolls or anything because my heart could not handle a cat dying. Like, I can deal with the children and the, you know, toddlers and everything. Like, it hurts, but I can deal with it. I cannot deal with losing Bluebell. So we're just going to go ahead and age Bluebell up. Yeah, okay, well, how do we age up Bluebell? Magic. We didn't get the whole birthday thing. But now Bluebell is an adult cat and look at how cute she is. Look at how freaking cute little bluebell is adorable and she still loves eating the chicken food it's a it's a favorite a favorite meal of hers none of that stupid cat food that we put out for her she specifically wants chicken food I wonder if Charity is gonna die from this. I'm like, girl, you need to stay away from everyone because we finally got like enough airs to keep this generation going. The last thing we need is for you getting everyone else sick and dying. Look at her, she's got like the smallpox or something. If she does die from this, I'm putting her down for smallpox. She does not look good. <laughs> How come all of this stuff is in your inventory, Geraldine? This should be in the table inventory. Okay, we just started a yard sale, so hopefully that'll do something. I'm ha I'm so happy about the triplets. I don't know what the chance... It was like a 1% chance to have triplets. Then God knows what the chance was for them to all be male. And then also for them to all survive their roles it was an absolute miracle. So I'm so grateful. <laughs> But like, my God, they're so hard to look after. Clementine has got her hands full. She really can't help out with this whole money-making scheme at the moment. Why are you all crying? Okay, she's going to rock you all in a second, guys. You're going to be okay. Geraldine's condition is improving and she feels a little better. I'm still not letting you out of there until you're not viral anymore. Okay, she's got a cold. That's not that bad. She might, she might make it, actually. I'm still keeping you in there. I'm not getting you... I'm not letting you get everyone else sick. She looks so angry. She's like, why am I stuck in here? Okay, I love how, like, every single person from in this world was just generated to come to our yard sale. And instead of coming to the yard sale, they're literally all just standing here. Oh, wait, okay, okay, we got, we got some takers. We've got some takers. Agatha Crumblebottom. I swear to God, I put in, like, a default... Girl, look at those titties. That... I don't think boob jobs existed back in like the 14th century. I'm like, I don't think boob jobs existed. No, they definitely didn't exist. Um, also, that is not an appropriate outfit. I did put in a default replacement for her, but I don't know why it's not working. And I, I don't mind. As long as you guys are buying things, it's it's all gravy, honestly. Yes, Peter, come buy our stuff. We've got some fabric. We've got some cross stitches. We've got this random rug. We've got some honey. Come on, Marina. I like how everyone's just standing over here. Like, yes, this is an appropriate place to stand. Let's all just gather in this random spot across the road. Hey, Beatrice, you, you got some money now that you've like married into royalty. Surely you can spare some for poor Sybil's dowry. We, we just need 5,000 simoleons to use for the dowry. So I think we can get there because we're already doing pretty well. We're on 3,500. I'm telling you though, in a moment, actually, do we have to pay our bills? Oh, that's a good point, actually. What are our bills looking like? Okay, our bills are 920. So that kind of puts a damper on things, but it's okay. We can still we can still make it work for us. Oh, Sybil is so excited to have her own baby. She's loving all the nieces. Well, I was going to say all the nieces and nephews, but it's literally just nephews. My bad. Okay, so we're going to grab a serving of food that we can give to Geraldine since Geraldine is currently in quarantine. Okay, where did you put that? Okay, she did grab a serving and then she put it, okay, it's in your inventory. Okay, this is for Geraldine. And then Sybil, you're allowed to eat as well. And so are you, Clementine. Oh my God, she wants to become enemies with Sybil. <gasps> what has happened between those? I like how I just pinned it. Like, wow, that's crazy. But also, we're gonna make that happen. Why don't you like her? What if you guys, a festering grudge and a hurt grudge, they do not get along. Okay, where is Sybil? What if you, like, apologize to her, though? What if you guys were, like, nice to each other? No, that's too easy, isn't it? Okay, come over here. You can declare her your enemy. But I think you've got to yell at her a little bit more. Grace has decided that she hates Sybil. There is some kind of grudge going on there. And the two of them, like, were basically children together. So Sybil's literally only just aged up, and Grace is too far behind her. So these two have had some kind of, like, childhood drama that has, like, made them hate each other. Okay, so we're just gonna go help look after the baby so we can make this enemy thing work for us later. Oh my gosh, you like, you get distracted for two seconds and all of a sudden all the coops and stuff are disgusting. <laughs> Whoops. 
just been really focused on making that dough. Okay, Geraldine, uh, I got a notification saying that Geraldine feels much better and is slowly recovering from my illness. That is great. You're staying in the quarantine until you're all better. I'm not, I'm not letting you come in and give our babies influenza. Are you kidding me? No, not happening. You have to be better, all the way better if you want to be around the babies. Oh my god, although maybe it would be like one less baby to have to deal with. Poor Clementine, she just wants to sleep so badly. She's having like, she's having the worst time at the moment. Okay, well, I'm leaving poor Clementine to deal with that and hopefully she'll be feeling a lot better once we come back. But we do actually have some aging up and birth things happening today. So I am going to bring you guys with me and hopefully the babies will be managed by the time we come back to them. Okay, so Eleanor Valois, the Queen of France, is currently in labor, so we're gonna let her have a baby and then we will see what happens with the roles. So Eleanor is very eager to have another boy, so she's got her first boy, Augustine. Okay, no doctor's appointment, <laughs> go away. She's got her first boy, Augustine, who is like the heir, and then she needs a spare. So she's she's gonna be very happy with this. We have a baby boy, and I need to figure out what to call him. We're gonna name him, oh my god, I need a name I can pronounce. Okay, we're gonna call him Philippe Valois. And a baby girl, we have twins. Gosh, we've really been getting multiples recently. I actually have it set, I think twins are a 10% chance, and triplets are a 1% chance. So the chance of getting triplets is super low. Twins are still a bit iffy and like her mother had twins so maybe it's a bit genetic. Actually maybe we'll call this baby Amelie which is kind of like a reference to her mother Emilia who was Italian. So Amelie is kind of like a French version of Emilia and the last name Valois. Okay so Emilia Valois, oh sorry Amelie Valois and go with the boy called again. I've already forgotten. And Philippe Valois. Good job. And Eleanor at the moment is feeling pretty good about herself. She's just had three babies in the span of two pregnancies. So she is pretty chuffed. But before she gets too happy, we do have to do our death rolls. So let's hope it all goes okay. Um, let me get this up. And so first we got a roll for Eleanor. We're rolling our d20 and we are rolling a 17. So she's fine, of course. And then for the boy, Philippe, we're rolling a 15. No, are you kidding me? Philippe doesn't make it. Philippe passes away. <laughs> Eleanor is not going to be happy about this. And then we're going to roll for Amelie and... They both rolled a 15. <gasps> no. Oh, Eleanor is not going to be happy about this. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so both Philippe and Emily die. This is kind of cruel. Okay, I feel really bad for poor, poor Eleanor at the moment. Both of her new babies have just been whisked away and... It's like she was never pregnant at all, so we're gonna leave her to mourn because we do have um, the birthday of her younger brother today over in England. Today is also Edward's birthday. Edward is the king of England and today he turns into a teenager, hopefully, and gets to finally take his powers as king of England because um, his uncle Leopold's actually ruling for him because he's too young. But once he becomes a teenager, he will be fit and ready to rule. I mean, he's still only 13, so I'm sure Leopold's still going to have a lot of say, but he can actually make decisions now, so I think Edward's pretty excited to finally get into power. So I'm going to get up our death rolls. I'm rolling for a teenager. So we're going to roll a d20, and he is getting a 13. So he can age up, no problem, and he is looking pretty chuffed about that. Okay, that is, you're very handsome, Edward, but that is a peasant's outfit, so we are going to fix that up for you. Edward, he looks a lot like Florent. I feel like he's definitely got Florent's face, but he's got all of Amelia's, like, colouring. Okay, here is Edward with a bit of a makeover. He's looking so handsome. He's looking like an actual king. Now he's dressed, and I think he looks so dashing. I'm so happy he survived, and hopefully, 
you know, he'll be a good ruler. I believe in him though. I think he's gonna do great. You're doing great, sweetie. Okay, let's head back to the main household and we will leave Edward to do his thing because we really need to get that dowry money underway. Okay, so we're back on the farm and all of the babies are actually happy for once. And it is Clementine's longest, deepest wish to hang clothes on the clothesline. So I'm going to allow her to do that. You're welcome, Clementine. <laughs> okay, I feel like there is a lot of people coming onto our lot after doing that yard sale. Everyone go home. Oh my God, there's so many people. This is the problem. <laughs> problem with doing yard sales is everyone just pops over. Okay, everyone, you can go home. Bye. Oh my god. They're everywhere. Geraldine, how did you get out of your room? You have a cold. Get back in here. Good. Everyone, go away. <laughs> this is too chaotic. Okay, alone at last. God forbid we should go five seconds without one of the babies crying. So, okay, we've got Tristan aging up tomorrow. Hopefully, he makes it. So, there'll be one less baby to deal with. We have Alari over here fishing, trying to catch a DJ booth or something because we really need to get Sybil's dowry figured out. Um, I do have a plan for who she will hopefully marry, so we just see that money underway. Because Alaric just wants the best for Sybil. He wants her to marry into... He really wants her to marry into, like, a decent family. He wants her to be a little bit more up in the world than they are. Um, obviously, he can't afford to marry her into, like, royalty. But he feels like he could manage, like, a good middle class family for her. Where she's going to be well looked after and taken care of. So that's what he is really trying to achieve. But it does make him really uncomfortable being out in the rain and having to fish. How are you feeling, Geraldine? She's got a fever. She's all stuffed up. She's on the mend. As long as you're on the mend and you're not around the babies, I don't really mind. How's her hunger doing? She's fine. Yeah, you can just stay in there. Clementine's just really deep in thought. Oh, she didn't like her birth plan. You don't get a birth plan. You just gotta go with the punches. Roll with the punches. Okay, Geraldine no longer feels sick as the disease has run its course and she's feeling much better. Okay, that means you might actually be allowed out of your room, Geraldine. I'm gonna let Geraldine out of this room. Oh, I'm sorry, Geraldine, but it was necessary. You didn't want your, like, step grandbabies to get sick, did you? Okay, you're welcome for protecting the family, you know? Oh, look how much money we just got. That's exciting. Okay, Geraldine, what do you, can you do that to... Oh my gosh, that garden is in need of some TLC. And I might... Maybe I'll just buy some more plants for it because I feel like this whole trying to find them out in the wilderness is not working super well. Oh my gosh, Alaric just got a future cube. How much is that? 325. See, this is why I sent him fishing. It's like such a hack. Okay, Alaric is so sick of fishing and they're all quite hungry. So Clementine, I'm gonna need you to come over here. Stop being so disappointed. Oh my, who is spending money? Oh no, that's okay, that's civil. <laughs> Alaric, look at you cooking. Cooking that pottage. Pottage. I thought it was porridge. I think I've been saying porridge this whole time. Geraldine, now that you're out, you can actually like look after the babies a little bit. Oh my god, how many of them are crying? All of them are crying! Okay, Sybil, you might have to come over and help with this one. Okay, I don't know how y'all are out here doing like the 100 baby challenge. Like, I have four babies and I'm just like, what in the world? How am I supposed to do this? This is so ridiculous. Like, I could never do the 100 baby. Like, I've not even contemplated it because I just find it so crazy that people actually do this for fun. Alaric really wants to go work out and I really want that for him as well. He he wants to go for a jog and he wants to play with the cat. Well, you can play with the cat. Yeah, I know that they didn't have laser pointers, but it is the only like play option. So we're gonna we're gonna do that. Oh, you could get like a one of those tickler things. Oh, what about getting like a cat dazzler? Oh my god, you guys, look how cute little blue bell is. Oh blue bell, you love that. You love that. That is so cute, you guys. School is stupid. I should just be able to start working or living life. Can I never go to school again? You do not go to school. You do not go to school. Um, so I don't know what to tell you, girl, but you've never been to school once in your entire life. Okay, we got voting open, so I'll take care of that in a second. But first, finally, 
We are at the day where Tristan, little Tristan over here, gets to age up. So we're going to do our roles for him. Oh my god, go away exceptions. I don't care. I don't care. And everyone else is crying. So we're going to see if Tristan gets to age up today. Okay, so he's rolling up in a toddler. So we're doing our toddler role and he is rolling. No, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I swear this never happens. And I know I messed up with Tiberius, y'all. I remember, but like this is an eight and on a toddler line it clearly says an eight is a death roll oh my gosh okay well apparently Tristan didn't make it after all that energy we just put into him oh it's so hard I don't know if I can do it I'm just gonna save it because I just this is like emotionally difficult okay Tristan no oh Tristan oh no at least we have it three other boys but oh my god that breaks my heart that is so sad okay and now he's sad because his baby brother just oh, his older brother just died so who does that make first i did put down the order of their birth i think it's yeah caspian is now next in line for airship and then it goes godfrey and then ulysses is the last in line i'm glad that we at least have like enough boys that this shouldn't be too much of a problem Maybe I'll just sell some of the stuff rather than putting it in a market because I really do need her to like make the money. I would rather do it as a market, but they're not gonna they're not gonna do this in the rain, so I'm just gonna sell everything. And we almost got five thousand, so hopefully we can actually get Sybil married off soon as well. We can officially marry off Sybils. Okay, well everything's kind of looking okay. No one's really that happy, but because we have enough money, I might send Alaric to go and speak to the family that he intends to marry Sybil off to. So we're gonna go over there with Sybil and just leave this chaos behind for a little bit. So this is the Fairfield household. As you can see, it's quite a nice house. Um, it's quite large and you can tell these guys have money. They have a lot more money than like Alaric. So they are landowners. They're not necessarily like, you know, nobility, but they, they definitely have a little something going on. So I'm going to let Alaric go and knock on the door. Alaric was just invited inside and the family's all out here. So hopefully they come in. Yeah, they're all running inside. It's quite a grand home. I think Sybil's already quite excited. Well, she's scared from this thunderstorm, but I think she's already quite excited to live here, hopefully, um, if all goes well. So Sybil is introducing herself to her future husband, who is very dirty at the moment. Oh my god, what happened to you, Frederick? So this is Frederick Fairfield, and this is Edith Fairfield. Both are clipping a little bit with the fountain. <laughs> And everyone's just having a lot of trouble, like, interacting with each other. Like, I, I just, Alaric, you gotta man up a little bit and just introduce yourself to your future father-in-law if you want this to happen. Scream incoherently. Well, that's a great way to meet your future, your future husband. Well, she sees him as very attractive, so she's very into this, which is great. You still don't introduce yourself, Alaric. Okay, so he already doesn't like Alaric. I wonder what he thinks of Sybil if she, like, introduces herself respectfully. Yeah, he likes her. He likes Sybil a lot more. So she thinks that he's clingy, but he thinks that she is proper and polite because she did a respectful introduction. Um, very politely and then Alaric thinks that Otto is responsible but he thinks that Alaric's all up in dreamland so he's not that into Alaric but he does like Sybil and that's the most important thing and then what does Sybil think of Frederick so they both have like very positive feelings about each other and she also sees him as being very attractive which is obviously important for a relationship so I think it's important that obviously these two lovebirds have a little bit of time together also that Alaric and Otto can discuss the terms of the marriage because obviously this is kind of like Otto doing a favor for uh, Alaric by taking in Sybil. He's just been told of what a lovely young woman Sybil is and how suitable she's going to be for his son and obviously Alaric has come up with the money so Otto is really trying to do like you know a nice thing by Alaric. So they seem to be getting along great actually. They're having a really good time and I think they're doing a really good job of like figuring out what the terms of the marriage are going to be and Sybil is just sitting over here politely playing chess with her future sister-in-law Edith. 
Um, Edith is also going to be getting married soon, so so they probably won't spend too much time together after Sybil is married. But I think they've all come to an agreement, and now Sybil's actually met her future husband-in-law, so we're going to leave them at that and head back home. And hopefully the babies are all looked after by now. Oh my god, he's still so sad after losing Tristan, though. Sybil's great. Sybil's like, I can't believe this is going to be my home. Are you kidding me? This is amazing. <laughs> Okay, so now that's done, I'm just going to send everyone to bed for the night and hopefully they can all actually have a good night's sleep despite the babies, although we do have one less baby, so that should make it a bit easier. Why do you keep crying? You're f I literally just did everything to sort of like fill your needs. Why do you keep crying? Oh my god, these babies, guys, I am not prepared for this life. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Oh, Alaric's such a good dad though, look at him. He's such a good father, despite the fact that these little things are nightmares to deal with. I swear, he was not that bad as a baby was he? Like, I don't remember him being that bad. Not, at least not when I moved him. Why are they still crying? We've done literally everything for you. We've literally done everything for you. I'm gonna have Sybil get married tomorrow, but um, I think it's time for them to like go into the bathhouse together. Clementine's staying at home to look after the babies, and then Grace doesn't get to come because she and Sybil don't get along, and Sybil doesn't need that kind of stress when she's about to get married. And honestly, I haven't really had to bring them here that much, because I think washing their hands brings their hygiene up a lot, so they really haven't had that much issues with their hygiene. But I feel like Sybil just really wants to like relax and beautify and cleanse herself in preparation for her new husband, and nobody else is really that excited about the bathhouse. <laughs> Here we go, so they're just all relaxing the hot springs together and this is a really great opportunity for Sybil to just become a little bit more clean and fresh smelling and ready for her new life with her new husband and a new family and she is marrying into like relative wealth compared to like where she's coming from so she's really looking forward to that and she should actually have a private bath at the new place so I think she's really excited about getting to experience that and I might just let her have a sauna as well like we really just want her in a good mood for a wedding Alaric is joining her they're all gonna have like a lovely so oh she's she's delighted by this she's like what a lovely time I never get to do this oh my god the springs are dirty why are they dirty? How, are you supposed to clean them or something? <laughs> anyway, that was lovely. And so now that they've had a little relax, I might send them back home again. I would have had her get married today, but the prom's on today. And I did just get the mod that like disables future proms, but I think they have to be like not added to the calendar yet. So I've just disallowed future proms. So hopefully we shouldn't have this problem in the future. Oh my god, actually, is this the last day? Okay, this is the last day of 1320, so she's not gonna be able to get married until 1321. One more day, sweetheart. But she's like having a lovely time. She's so relaxed. All the babies are actually happy for once. This is why I like to leave them, because then I just don't have to deal with them anymore. Oh no, that was too soon. I said that too soon. Oh no, I got hit by lightning. Are you kidding me? Well, we can't replace her right now because she's about to get married. So we literally can't afford it. Okay, so I did get some more things out of the fridge to plant, but like this, this is the problem with like um, not having the plots is they just plant them like so randomly. Bluebell is, um, I don't know how to say this in a polite way. She's like a bit horny, so... Bluebell is looking for some love, but uh, we do not have a male cat around and we actually can't fit it in the household. I feel like maybe I should just add some stray male cats and just like let the chips fall where they may. Oh my god, what are you scared of? She looks terrified. Oh honey, what is that? Is that the chicken? Oh, she's scared of the chicken. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that is so cute. Okay, I've got chores to do and it's like nearly the end of the day, so... Let's finish up with the Hawthorns and let's go do our chores together. Today is the day where little Juliet here gets the age up into a child, hopefully. And these guys have pretty good luck with their age up, so I'm thinking she should be okay. But we're gonna all do this roll together. It's okay, we're gonna hold each other's hands and we're gonna get through it. So we're gonna roll our d20 for a child and she gets the age up, it's not a nine or 19. So little Juliet, it is time for you to grow a little bit older today. And here is Juliet and I feel like she's just looking so pretty in her little pink dress and she looks, I think she's looking a little bit like Viola maybe in the face, um, but she looks so cute. 
And finally, we have the birthday of little Augustine Valor, Eleanor and Nicholas's only surviving child. And I was told that it was actually pronounced Valois. I haven't actually changed her name yet. The last name is pronounced Valois, not Valois. So thank you for that. So I'm going to do his death rolls and let's see how he goes. So we're aging him up into a toddler and we're going to roll our d20 and we are rolling a seven. So thankfully little Augustine makes it and gets to age up into a toddler. That would have been devastating if they lost Augustine because Eleanor's got all her hopes and dreams pinned on him right now. Oh, and look at him. He's so cute. Okay, so first we're going to flip to see whose hair color he gets, either his mother's or his father's. So he gets his father's hair color, the dark blue. And now we're going to flip for his eyes and he's getting his mother's eyes. What color eyes does she have again? Is it orange? So Eleanor has like dark orange eyes. So here's little Augustine. He looks so cute and he's got a little bowl cut, which I think was popular at the time. Um, so we're going to leave that on him, even though by today's standards, it's maybe not as fashionable. I think they would have thought it was handsome. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time when Sybil should be getting married into the Fairfield family, which is very exciting. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Bye.